how to make boots like these in clothes ready. Making shoes in clothes ready in general involves a lot of faking, for example freezing, and the most important part to hold the shape is the sole. I have loaded an avatar here with the shoes already removed. Now if you're going to make soles that are completely flat, like for flip flops, the steps would be rather simple. I'd create a plane, move it slightly under the avatar, and in translucent surface mode where you can see through the plane, use the internal line tool to create a shape alongside the outline of the foot. I've seen other people who rotate the skeleton of the whole avatar to make the bottom of the feet facing forward so you can do this step in the 2D window. That would also work. Adjust the curve according to the design until you think the shape is there. Cut it out and now you've got a flat shoe sole. If we observe the side view of a shoe though, the sole usually has a bit of a curve, especially at the tip, not to mention the sole of high heels. To achieve this side curve, there are different approaches. I've seen this other YouTube video where he added internal lines on the flat sole and used the fold arrangement tool to bend them individually. Another approach I personally prefer was inspired by Elena Galakieva on Instagram, but she deleted her account so I'm gonna visualize the steps here quickly. The idea is to clamp the piece which will be the sole between two frozen boards where the side curve is drawn so that when simulated, the middle piece tightens up to have that side curve. Use the method from earlier to draw the outline of the sole. Once cut out, you will get the sole with the desired shape from all dimensions. To draw the side curve on the frozen board, I would rotate the skeleton in X-ray mode, create a plane, Turn on translucent service mode in both 2D and 3D windows and draw the curve according to your design. Remember to leave some space away from the feet. Once the curve is down, duplicate the plane horizontally and use the previous setup to tighten up the bottom piece in between. Then cut the sole shape out. Now that we got the most important piece down, observe the structure again. There are four more important pattern pieces to go. Now for the next step, a regular shape would be ideal as a starting point. We can see from the top view here that it's an oval, so I will go from there. Use the ellipse tool to draw the oval. Place it at the desired height around the ankle and freeze it. Now we have the sole and this ankle ring frozen to support the whole structure. The easiest piece to construct the next would be the back, which are the previous three and four combined. This piece can basically be seen as a rectangle wrapping around the heel. I'm matching its width with half of the oval's perimeter, which is 167 and what I randomly drew was 262.3, but you don't have to do the math yourself. Arrange it roughly at where it should be, sew the corresponding edges together, click on the sewing line and you will see the length difference. Deduct that from the length. Adjust the height accordingly. Sew the bottom to the heel part of the sole. The next easiest piece to construct now would be the previous number 2. It can also be seen roughly as a rectangle. It shares the side seam with the back and the bottom edge as a bit of an arc. The last piece takes more imagination and test to get the shape right. But that's also the benefit of digital fashion because we can just eye it and fix it during the process very quickly in real time.
When adjusting the pattern shape in the 2D window, basically you're giving more area to the part where it seems too tight in 3D. Now that the base structure is down, the next step is to add details like cutting the back into two pieces, adding the loop and the label, and the binding lines. For the binding here, I learned from a senior designer that it's actually better to just make a thin stripe of pattern instead of using the binding tool or the piping tool that comes with Clo, as it's gonna be easier to control the result. For the piping here too, I did create piping lines manually from 2D patterns. The oval shape we did earlier comes in handy again as we can just sew the piping line to it. Again, I'm starting from a rectangle with the width being the same as the oval's perimeter. I'm sewing the long sides together so it will wrap itself up as a thin pipe. To avoid collision as much as possible during simulation, my personal habit is using the Select Match tool to first fold it alongside the width a bit, so that the sewing line between its two long edges will not fully overlap with the surface itself, and then arrange this ring roughly at the right place before doing the simulation. There are other tricks here to make it smooth, especially for small or thin patterns like this, such as reducing the particle distance and the colliding thickness. Also, don't forget to sew the two ends together to close the loop. Adjust the fold angle of this sewing line to make the piping sit in a better position. The bottom I made consists of two parts, a surrounding wall faking the midsole and another pattern being the outsole, similar to the insole we created at the very beginning. Same logic, we observe the curve of the outsole and draw it on the frozen board, stretch up a piece of fabric between the standing boards, and clone the insole pattern as an internal shape onto this piece of fabric. Once you get the outsole and the insole frozen, it's only missing this long stripe of fabric to fill up the gap. This linear measure tool can help us measure the gap. I'm gonna measure the most wide and narrow bits of the gap and use that lens as the reference for the pattern we're gonna make. Unlike the piping we did earlier, this pattern doesn't have to form a tube first before being sewn to another thing, so we could skip the manual arrangement. After we finish sewing in 2D, just click on the pattern in the 3D window Right-click and choose Superimpose. It kind of forces the pattern to wear its sewn without any physics applied yet. Same as before, remember to sew the two ends together, reduce particle distance, adjust sewing line's fold angle, and here I'm matching the height with the height of the gap section by section. If you are making shoes with a puffy sew though, you will need to give it a bit more in the height so it has the extra fabric to puff up. The piping at the bottom is a bit tricky to make. I used the same techniques as earlier for the top piping at the ankle, such as reducing particle distance, strengthening the pattern. I skipped the manual arrangement and just snapped it to where it's sewn. But it seems like manual arrangement would have worked better. You can also try set its layer to one so it sits above all the other patterns. Another trick I figured is to deactivate any pattern that gets in the way before simulating it. As the last part, I'm going to talk about texturing. There are in general four types of materials I'm using here. The first is this suede material for the surface. I used the normal map to achieve the noisy texture. The second material is for all these binding and piping lines that has a stripy texture to it. It's also going to be achieved by a normal map with an angle. The third material is the fur lining. Technically, it should be applied to all the suede patterns, but since fur rendering is the most time consuming, I'm applying this fur material only to the parts that will be visible from our camera angle. The last material is what I find the most difficult, which is the rubber bottom. Because I'm using a displacement map to fake the teeth, 
but to find the best value combination of amount and shift took me a while. I've gathered all the textures I used in the link below, so feel free to download. If you followed all the way here, congrats! Now you know how to construct a shoe in Clo, and you can prepare one for your avatar to wear it, even in motion. To achieve that, you will just need to follow the instruction here called How to Register Shoes from Clo's official channel. I've managed to go through the logical steps in 10 minutes, but the whole shoemaking process took me hours. So if you want to skip all that, I've also uploaded the boots I made in this video on Clo's official marketplace, Connect. This is where you'll find more clothes specific assets for free or several bucks to support the artist with the money of a cup of coffee or, in my case, bubble tea. My asset would be called UGG Boots. It didn't allow me to upload both the project file and the ZX file in the same entry, so I uploaded them separately. The project file is suitable for scenarios where you only want to do still renders in Clo. You won't need to set up any material yourself, and you can modify the shape by editing the 2D patterns. The ZX file is for scenarios where you want the Clo avatar to wear them in motion. You will need to manually set up the fur material and the bottom material. I've put up instructions in the attachment. You will not be able to modify the shape as they are already converted to a solid 3D model, but you can customize the textures. They are pending at the moment, but once they are published, I put the link down below. Hope the video is useful for helping you understand the workflow of constructing a shoe. Leave a comment if you have questions, suggestions, or different approaches and tips. Thank you for watching.